Hello and welcome to Bird Blackjacks. Um, in this video I'm going to be looking at wiring diagrams. I had thought about wiring something, uh, but if we need to look at wiring diagrams. I was going to kind of do it as I went along, because that needs wiring, but that's got CDI ignition, so it's a little bit weird. The white bike on the ramp needs wiring, um, but that's got silly little micro switches, so that's got a load of weird stuff. And um, skinny money could do with wiring, but I'm not putting that back together just to take it all apart again in a minute. So, um, it's just going to have to be a diagram, I'm afraid. Let's get on with that. Um, we like to talk about wiring a motorcycle from scratch, but we're not really wiring it from scratch. We've already got an alternator because it's attached to the engine. We've got a starter motor attached to the engine as well. Um, with any luck on the following wind, we found somewhere to put the battery. And we'll also have a regular rectifier, a star solenoid, a main switch, and some fuses to get us going. Um, the first step then is to connect the main battery leads. Um, so the first one we do is from the positive terminal to the solenoid. Um, it can make a difference which terminal you choose for that, so it depends on which solenoid you're using. Um, the next thing to do is connect the solenoid to the star mirror and the other side of the battery to ground. So that's off to a good start. Um, the next thing is it would be nice if the current in the alternator made it to the battery. So we connect the alternator to the reg rack using two, occasionally normally three wires. Um, the reg rack will need earthing, um, grinding if you're American. There's uh, sometimes there's a black wire. Uh, black wire isn't always a ground. This is an important thing to remember is that black wires are not always ground. Um, reg rack could be grounded through the body, it could have a separate ground wire, but a black wire coming out of a reg rack could sometimes be a load sensor. Um, check with your manufacturer. Um, but what we do have coming out of the reg rack is a red and white wire or a red wire. It goes to the same post on the solenoid. The reason we're connecting it to the solenoid is because that lets it go, connects it in effect to the battery. And we don't want to end up with six or seven or eight or nine or ten wires connected to the battery. So let's not do that. Let's just do this. Um, the other side of that, we need to run a wire from here, which is again connected to the battery, um, to the main fuse. Uh, from the main fuse we go up to the main switch, unsurprisingly. And from the other side of the main switch we connect all the fuses together with the same wire. Um, so that means this side of the fuse box we've now got four live terminals that we can come off of. So the first one of those we'll use is this one, we'll call it the ignition fuse. And the first thing we'll do with that is connect it to the low tension side of the solenoid via push to make switch. Um, you can put that switch in the ground side and sometimes it does. And I don't like that because if that wire gets ashore then that will just keep running. If the switch is in the high side, the positive side or feed side if you prefer, this can get short and it will still work. Um, if you get a short this side it blows the fuse but the important thing is, is if you get short that side it'll make the star mode run and the star mode will just keep running so this is the way I prefer to do it I know some manufacturers don't necessarily do it like that um, doubling up off of that fuse we come around and take power to in this case the ignition coil and the points because that was the easiest one to draw. Um, you could imagine that was the black box for the ignition and this went to the pickups on the crank. It's not it's not that important how that works but the point is that there is a circuit there. The point of this video is that it should work by the end of it you should be able to work out how to work out how that works. If you see what did that make sense? I don't know. But let's carry on. Um, so we've wired all that up. We know how that works, so we can ignore it for now. Um, the next thing we've got, we'll call this the lights fuse, and we'll run a wire from the fuse 
to the light switch. A um, couple of things work off the light switch, one of which is the tail light. So we'll wire that in with its own little ground. And the other side of it goes to the dip switch. Dip switch is an on on switch. There's no off position here. Um, one of those is main, the other one's dip. So we'll wire them to the headlight and then to ground. A um, couple more things you're liable to need while you're up there is a speedo light and a main beam light because you need them for the MAT. So we take the speedo light off that side of the switch, we take the main beam off of the main beam terminal, we run all the grounds together and ground them out in the same place. And that is essentially your basic lights. You don't need the side lights to come on with a separate switching, it just adds to the wiring. We're trying to keep this as simple as we can. So that's the bare minimum. Um, so we know how that works now. So the next thing is just to forget about that keep the tail light because we think that's handy and we will use what we will call an accessory fuse um, quite often that wire is brown so let's use a brown one and we take a wire from the accessory fuse we run it through the brake light switch and we run it to the stop the stop filament and stop tail light and you've got a rear brake light where you live may require you to have a front one as well um, or depending on year the bike's registered so what we do is we double up off of there and we come to another switch and we tap into the feed to the stop tail and that's got either of those switches or both of those switches will make that light up now um, coming off the front brake light switch because it's up the front we run that through another bell push um, which we then run down to the horn uh, again you could put the bell push in the ground from the horn but again a short there means that the horn will just keep going off which is annoying short here will blow the fuse um, so that's the accessory circuit the last one I've got here once we've tucked that away um, is flasher relay pick a flasher relay with just two terminals it's the simple answer to that when you get like three or five or why the weird combination so you don't need it, just get a two flat terminal one. This is the positive terminal or the B terminal. Um, the other side is the L terminal, which strangely enough actually goes to the switch, not the light. Um, the switch is a on off on switch. So it's got an off position in the middle. You can turn that side on or this side on. And as you can probably imagine by now, it's fairly simple. You just connect both indicators to the switch and grind everything out. You're going to need warning lights. To, um, it's easy just to have two of them and wire them like that. So you've got left and right warning light. Uh, running them with one is difficult. It's not so difficult with incandescent bulbs but it gets a bit leery with LED bulbs so we'll stick with that because we know that works. Um, and that's the indicator wiring is relatively straightforward. Get rid of that now. Right, so what have we got? We've got the ignition circuit, which includes the starter trigger. We've got the light circuit, which is the main beam dip beam's tail light. We've got the accessory circuit, which does brake lights and horn. And we've got the indicator circuit, if you find you need them. Um, so what have we learned now? Basically what we've got here is this is not really a fuse box. What this is is a power distribution unit that distributes the power from the battery to the main switch, from the main switch to the ignition, the lights, the horn and the indicators. And that's just the easy way to wire up. I've heard people say that oh you don't need fuses. Well you don't need fuses. You could put circuit breakers in there but the point of having that box is that it serves that function and you might as well have a fuse in it while you're at it. Um, none of these circuits were that complicated. It just looks a bit more complicated when you've got all of them in the same place. So what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that we need a circuit diagram is not a thing in itself. What it is is a collection of circuit diagrams. I'm going to say that again. A wiring diagram is not 
a thing in itself. A wiring diagram is a collection of circuit diagrams, and the circuits aren't that complicated. Well, when you put them all together, it looks a bit like spaghetti. Um, and as we all know, once you've figured out how to eat it, spaghetti is not a problem. Um, so that's really it. That is how you wire a motorcycle. So the whole point of that was that it's a wiring diagram. It's not a thing I'm saying. It's a collection of circuit diagrams, and the circuit diagrams aren't that difficult. Um, I shall try and do some more wiring videos where I'm actually wiring stuff up because some people prefer to see it actually being done. Um, obviously, those two things need wiring at some point. Um, and time and circumstances permit, I'll get on with that. Um, in the meantime, uh, take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next one.